Many PCs have exploded in popularity over the last few years, and honestly, I'm here for the ride. The problem is that when something becomes super popular, everyone wants a piece of that pie and starts making their own version, which can very quickly lead to stagnation, boring and unoriginal designs, and just overall unenthusiasm. B-Link said, get that weak ass shit out of here when they made this, the B-Link GTI Ultra. What, you thought this was just another boring square? No, 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 check this out. This has a cableless connection directly to its own dock that allows for NVMe expansion, Wi-Fi, and a dedicated PCIe slot, all with its own built-in power supply. This is freaking cool, man. Let's talk about it. This video is sponsored by Server Part Deals, the largest source for manufacturer recertified and refurbished hard drives. I know all of you watching are a bunch of data holders and I also know you like saving money. Well, hot damn, you're gonna love Server Part Deals. Their lineup of recertified drives comes directly from the manufacturer, so you're not getting these from Dan behind the 7-Eleven. Server Part Deals also does their own internal testing to ensure proper reliability on all of their drives. If you're still not sold, you even get a two year limited warranty. You'll also be happy to know that the drives you buy will arrive quickly with free two day shipping and will arrive safe and sound in this super protective packaging that was custom designed in house. I would tell you to donate all the money you save from buying these drives from Server Part Deals to me, but in reality, I know you're just buying more drives and that's okay. Check out Server Part Deals to get some Seagate Iron Wolf drives for your home NAS or for your business and for all of your storage needs using the links down in the description below. All right, so this is the GTI Ultra from B-Link along with their EX docking station. First and foremost, let's run through the specs and the price. At the time making this video, there are three configurations you can choose from for the actual mini PC. There's one with a Core Ultra 9 185H, a Core Ultra 7 155H, and a Core i9 12900H, all with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe drive, coming in at a price of 919, 849, and 639 respectively. Then you have the dock, which can be purchased separately for $159. Or you can purchase a bundle with any of the configs and save a few bucks. Definitely a good chunk of change, but let's talk about what you get here. Taking a look at the 12900H version, which is the same one that they sent over, we get a 14 core, 20 thread CPU that can boost up to five gigahertz and do that at a TDP of 45 watts. And this is all with the built-in Iris XE graphics. So not quite as good as their art graphics on their newer chips, but it'll still hold its own. Then we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe drive and Wi-Fi 7 built in. The device itself supports expansion up to 96 gigabytes of dual channel RAM and has two M.2 slots for storage expansion. Some things you don't usually see in a mini PC though are built in speakers, microphone and power supply, all of which this thing has. While those don't really add to the performance of the device, it's just nice to have the speakers and mic and also not have to worry about a big old chungus power brick. Taking a look at the IO, we have a Thunderbolt 4, three and a half millimeter audio combo, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4a, four USB type A 3.2 at 10 gigabit, two 2.5 gig RJ45, and that's just on the back. On the front, we get another USB type A 3.2, SD card slot, USB-C at 10 gigabit, another three and a half audio jack, and the power button, which does have a built-in fingerprint reader. Clearly we are covered when it comes to IO on here. However, that's not even the coolest IO on this thing. Removing the rubber grommet on the bottom reveals a PCIe Gen 4x9 slot that lets this slide directly into the dock for a whole new world of possibilities. The dock itself is definitely the best external dock I've ever seen. We get a full X16 physical slot and two M.2 slots, one for storage and one for Wi-Fi, although you can only use one at a time. They even ran antenna connections to the outside so you can use those to get a much better signal. My favorite part though is the built-in power supply. No need to bring your own and set up some janky configuration with wires running everywhere. This just makes it super clean. And we also get dual eight pin PCIe power connections with cables to power nearly any GPU we put in here. And this is a full 600 watt power supply. So honestly, you could power pretty much anything. 
The mini PC connects to the dock using the slot we saw earlier and is secured with a piece of metal that screws into place. Kind of it. If you do throw a PCIe card in here, there's another piece you can attach to support the card, which you obviously want to use. And like I mentioned, the power cables are right there. Overall, it's an impressive design with tons of IO options, all in a surprisingly compact, clean form factor. I do wish the design wasn't so proprietary though. The way this is set up ensures that the dock will only work with the B-Link GTI Ultra series, unless someone comes along and designs something third party, but I don't really see that happening. I mean, I get it from a business sense as it incentivizes you to buy a B-Link mini PC, but as a consumer, I don't like proprietary design. I did mention that we do get nine lanes of PCIe Gen 4, and the way it's allocated is that eight lanes go to the X16 slot, and one lane goes to the M.2 slots, and that one lane is only running at Gen 3 speeds. So you can either run an NVMe drive or Wi-Fi card at one gigabyte per second. I do wish it had more bandwidth, but I'm guessing the rest of the lanes are used by the IO on the actual device. It's unfortunate because technically these chips support PCIe Gen 5, which doubles the bandwidth, but we're kind of handicapped by the Gen 3 on those M.2 slots, as we'll see in a bit. Alrighty, so you've heard me talk enough about this thing. How about we see how it performs? Now, first, I'm going to be talking about how this performs without the external dock, because as you'll see, uh, adding a GPU performs like adding a GPU. In Cinebench 2024, we got a single core score and a multi-core score of 97 and 941 respectively, which puts us in line with a Ryzen 5 5800X, not bad for a mobile chip. During these tests, I monitored the power draw, temperature, and noise levels. We were pulling around 115 watts with temperatures very much in check at 78 degrees, and the noise was honestly barely noticeable. Looking at the iGPU, there are two avenues here gaming and transcoding. For gaming, I mean, it's an integrated GPU. The 12900H in this system comes with the Intel XE graphics, which for gaming are actually pretty usable. Playing something less demanding like CS2 will give you a very playable experience if you're fine with 1080p medium low settings. AAA titles will struggle a bit, but with new technologies like Intel XE Super Sampling, we could play Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with 30 FPS. So like, you're not buying this to game. Your money would go much further if you went with a dedicated gaming system, but it still can play games, which is nice. Now for transcoding, this thing performs pretty well. The integrated graphics have dedicated encoders and decoders, which benefit things like streaming, video editing, and hosting a media server. I did a handbrake test on one of my 4K H.264 videos and transcoded that down to 1080p H.265 using the built-in QuickSync transcoding, and it'll even do 10-bit color, which is not common to see. That eight and a half minute video took about three and a half minutes to encode and lowered the file size from an already compressed 613 megabytes down to just 491. So yeah, this thing will chew through some video. Now, of course, this all changes if we use the dock and add a GPU. We can now play Cyberpunk natively at 1080p high settings, well over 60 FPS, cause yeah, GPU. Speaking of the dock, we also had an NVMe drive in here, which doesn't perform too well. Remember, that M.2 slot only gets a single lane of PCIe Gen 3, which is capped at one gigabyte per second. So do you want to take a guess at how fast our NVMe drive performed? Yeah, this is an NVMe drive that is rated for up to five gigabytes per second, but we won't ever be able to see it going over one. In comparison, here's the drive that's inside the PC itself. Much better, right? The other thing I wanted to test was the built-in microphones here because they're supposed to be pretty decent. Okay, so there's like four little microphone holes or arrays on here. I don't know, but this is a test of how it would sound if you were using this device as your main microphone for Zoom meetings or, you know, whatever you do audio things for. Yeah. All right, so I don't know how that sounded, but um, I'm probably overlaying some text while editing and giving my kind of uh, opinion on that. Cool, so this performs as expected, giving the specs, which is kind of the theme of newer mini PCs. 
When these things were first getting popular, you actually had to pay attention to the benchmarks because the cooling was usually so bad that they'd often thermal throttle or they had adequate cooling, but it was just super loud and obnoxious. I think we've gotten to the point to where you just expect a mini PC to perform well enough for the majority of people without all those annoying drawbacks from previous years. Shout out though to the built-in power supply on both of these devices, as well as the integrated GPU power plugs. It may not affect the performance, but it sure makes the user experience better. While most people will use this dock with a GPU, you could use any PCIe card you want. Need more NVMe storage? What about a high-speed NIC? Maybe you're some weirdo who wants a sound card. That's the cool thing about these docks is that it's not just a Thunderbolt connection to an external GPU. It's whatever you want it to be. So overall thoughts. I really like it, not because it's practical, but because it's cool. It's a sleek, clean form factor with an innovative way to add expansion and it performs well. You do get a few cool things that you don't normally get with a mini PC like fingerprint reader, speakers, microphone, and a built-in power supply. It's definitely not perfect though. A non-proprietary PCIe connection would have been pretty cool and the single lane to the M.2 slots is pretty weak sauce. Maybe the next version will be full fat PCIe Gen 5 and by that time, maybe Gen 5 drives will be a good bit cheaper. The thing I'm struggling with here is that I don't know who this is for. Like I mentioned, it's definitely cool and I'm all for innovating in the mini PC space, but I just don't know who's buying this. If you want expansion and a small form factor, you can just buy a small mini ITX PC. If you like the idea of a portable computer that has a dock at home, why not just get a laptop? Had the PCIe connection to the dock been something more standard, I could understand, but at the time of making this video, this dock only works with these lines of PCs. That's it. If you want to snag one though, I'll leave a link down in the description below. But that's all I have. Let me know what you think of this. Is it cool or just a gimmick? Or maybe both. If you like this video, then go ahead and drop a like. And if you want to see more mini PC stuff, then subscribe because we know there's no shortage of those out there. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my mini PC with a mini external dock and uh, full 16 lanes of PCI Gen 5. Mini. Y'all are the best. And if you're still watching, you're a power brick. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.